Isaiah chapter 25, Lamentations, the 25th book of the Bible. O Lord, thou art my God. Now, one particular expression you see throughout the Bible, when you look at Nebuchadnezzar and when they speak, a lot of times they'll say, when dressing God, they're talking to a prophet, the Lord thy God. And what they're missing is the Lord my God. I mean, is he your God? Because salvation is not, he's, he's my mother's God. He's their God. He's got to be your God. I will exalt thee. And when Paul writes to the Corinthian church, oh, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Paul, my great church, my great pastor. That's not the deal. Rah, rah, rah to my team. I have a great actor. I have a great actor. I have a favorite movie. Now, that's not exalting God. The very first commandment is God first all the time. That's where we all fail. I will praise thy name. The name is not Mary. The name is not Allah. The name is not Catholic. The name is not Baptist. The name is God, Jehovah, Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ. It is not a name to be taken by cussing. For thou hast done wonderful things. Genesis to Revelation. And that's only to tip the iceberg. How about myself from day one that I was born? And when I read my baby book and I see that in my life there have been many events where I should have died. And wonderful events that when we read Genesis 1, all the creation. That God made plant food for the animals before he made the animals. And that God made man and animals and birds and, and he put our bodies complete. The fact is that we have lungs to breathe. He's given us oxygen. He's given food to eat and he's given a digestive system. We are fearfully and wonderfully made, the Bible says. Throughout all the works that God did for Israel in the book of Exodus. Throughout all the miracles of the wilderness journey. And the one thing we learn book after book after book of the Bible, the, the wonderful thing of God is the long suffering of God. We've been six years at the farmer's market, the long suffering, the wonderful thing is that God is able to have somebody there, whether it be me or somebody else, to preach the gospel. And they get irritated with it. But that's the love of God. Thy counsels, his word of old, our faithfulness and truth. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And John chapter 1 says that Jesus is the word. We read about the, the Mother Earth and everything of Mother Earth and all the ores and natural resources are going to burn up with a fervent heat. And yet Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. And there it goes. There is two things on this earth that will last for eternal. That is the word of God and souls of men. For thou hast made of a city a heap. Destroy the city. 
whether it be a hurricane, tornado, floods, earthquake, and invading army. It is God that made that city a heap. Of a defense. That's the first time that word shows up. City, a ruin. Here's a city. It defends. It's got military. It's got strength. It's ruined. That defile, defend city to defend themselves. Not against God, you can't. A palace of strangers to be no city. Here's, you know, here's a great city, and it's no longer. It shall never be built. That's Babylon. God destroyed Babylon. God destroyed, destroyed this, the, the Syrian Empire. Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee, God. When God looks at, when man looks at the destruction and the power of God, which comes to fear God, which is the beginning of wisdom. Man is to look at COVID-19 and see the destruction of COVID-19 and say, I better put my faith and trust in God. They're not. That's why you're not going to get no revivals. How are you going to get a revival when the churches are closed? When even the Christians won't get right? That the fact is the destruction of God is to make man say, I better pay attention to that God. The city of terrible nations shall fear thee. For thou hast been a strength to the poor. You mean the, the mighty city, the powers, the defense city destroyed by God. And yet a poor man is given strength by God. That's not logic to your typical average human being in the world. And even to the aspect that people assume today, that if you're great in riches and great of material wealth, you got to be pleasing to God. That's Old Testament. That's not today. Paul had a few parchments and a few things and the clothes on his back, and the guy was rich in glory and great in heaven. And God writes to the lad to see in church age, you're rich, you're rich, you're great, you're wonderful, you oh yeah, you have no need of nothing, but you're poor, miserable, naked, blind. And I'm standing outside. There are people in third world nations that the Christians in America, you know. And they've got more in God than any rich church. The strength to the needy. So the poor and the needy are not the same. There's a difference. People who have a low income or no income. And then to a people that have a need. What is a need? Food. Rendment. There are people that are going to go to bed tonight. And they're starving. And there are people starving going to go to bed tonight and they're not going to wake up in the morning. They've starved to death. Strength to the needy in his distress. What's his distress? He has a need, not a want. Well, I want a brand new car. I want a job. I want a family. I want a brand. That's not. Want and needy are two different words. And Jesus said to his disciples, with food and raiment, be content. There are probably people in the world today, maybe Christians, 
who have been put in confined imprisonment in freezing uh, uh, areas of the world with very little and no clothes at all. The Walt Disney's, not Walt Disney, the Walt Disney's were cast off into the Alps, into the, the snow covered, wintry, with this to close, if no clothes on their back, by a typical church. If you read the Fox's Book of Mortars and the story of the Walt Disney Church, there's a need and then there's a want. A want is always not a need. A refuge from the storm. And there are storms in life. And then God comes and protects us. God comes in and puts a covering over us. And not always is God going to make the storm go away like he did in the storm on the Sea of Galilee. He may have us go through that storm with hope. A shadow from the heat. We're in a desert climate. You would find a lot of, and they found Abraham sitting underneath a tree. They found Deborah sitting underneath a tree. What are they doing sitting underneath a tree? Shade. And God is that tree, a shadow. And you wouldn't think God would be darkness, but a shadow is darkness. And it's a comfort. When the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against a wall. When the worst storm, when the worst people. Paul was attacked by everybody. He was attacked by his own Jewish brethren. He was attacked by the Gentiles. He was attacked by the church. <laughs> and God took care of him. And Paul was attacked by his own body. And God said, my grace is sufficient for thee. Thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers. As the heat in a dry place, even the heat with the shadow of a cloud, and pay attention to those clouds, because that's a, that's a reference to the second advent. He cometh with clouds, a cloudy day. In the branch of the terrible ones, there's that terrible ones again, shall be brought low. And there'll be terrible ones in the tribulation period. That their sole desire is to rid the world of Jewish people, God's people. And that Jesus said for the very time, except the time be shortened for the very elect. <laughs> the elect of God is there. God, God has to say, I, I got to change some time here to protect them. And a millennial phrase, verse 6, and in this mountain, would be Zion, shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things. Fat pig, well, I don't know, we can't get you pig. All right, fat calves, fat sheep, fat oxen, fat harvest. A feast of wines, plural, on the leaves. And the leaves are the, the settlement at the bottom. You put wine in a bottle and what settles to the bottom. Of fat things full of marrow. And that's the best part. That, that, that's of wines on the leaves. Well refined. It has been shifted. It has been filtered. It is the best. And he will, God will, destroy in the mountain of the face of the covering cast over 
all people. And in the, in the tribulation period, there's this, there's also this cloud of death. Yet do I walk through the valley of shadow of death? That bird, that chapter is on Israel. All people. The enemy of the Antichrist is anybody who will not receive that mark. Number one enemy is the Jews. Number two enemy would be those that helped the Jews. And number three enemy be those that did not receive the mark. A veil is spread over all nations. A protection. He will sh swallow up death in victory. 1 Corinthians 15, 54. That's God. That's Jesus Christ. That's Calvary. Now, oh, they saw Calvary. Where do you see dying on a cross? And yet you can run that reference to 1 Corinthians 50, 54 to Jesus Christ. But where do you see Calvary? Wait a minute. Verses 2, 3, 4, and 5, a tribulation passage, and also Babylon and tribulation. Verse 6, millennium. Verse 7, the victory over those in the tribulation. Verse 8, the first advent. Calvary, the empty tomb. Verse 9, the second advent. Verse 10, the millennium. He shall swallow up death in victory. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all, from all, from off all faces. All right, they saw Calvary. Do you know what the difference between swallow up death and victory and he shall wipe away all tears? Swallow up death is 1 Corinthians 15, 54. That is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ according to the scriptures. The wipe away all tears is Revelation 21, verse 4. How do they see Calvary? If you go by that verse right there, if you take that verse, all right, Jesus Christ suffered and died, according to scriptures, was buried and arose again the third day, according to scriptures, he has the, the keys of death and hell. At that moment that Jesus Christ came out of the tomb, there should have been a big Kleenex from heaven from God. Okay, let me wipe those tears. And yet he found Mary there crying. Did he wipe away her tears? No, her tears stopped with excitement that she realized who he was. She wiped her own tears. It, it, it's not the gardener. It's my Lord God and Savior. Wow, amen. When you look at the scriptures and prophecy, you're here, you're there, you're there, you're here, you're over there, you're there, you're here, you're over there, you're here, you're there. Even the 12 men and one committed suicide, so the 11 men that lived and breathed and, and had their being with Jesus Christ for three and a half years, they look forward to Calvary. Had no idea what was going on. And what was going on at Calvary, only one of them disciples was there at the cross. The rest of them. And while Jesus is buried in, 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 the, in the tomb and the Passover, they're hiding in the, in the upper room. You would think they'd be all sitting there with their lawn chairs waiting for Jesus to come out. And he told them. I'm going to Jerusalem. They're gonna they're gonna crucify me. They're gonna spit upon me. They're gonna mistreat me. But three days and three nights, as Jonas was assigned to the people of Nineveh, uh, as Jonas was in the heart of the earth, three days and three nights, he told them over and over and over, and they really saw Calvary. Peter wasn't there at Calvary. 
James was not there at Calvary. Luke was not there at Calvary. Matthew was not there at Calvary. Whose leg are you trying to pull? And we have a verse here of Calvary. Swallowed up death. He went into hell, got the keys to death and hell. And the next thing you read in the verse, he shall wipe away all tears. You know how many years that's been? It hasn't even happened yet. And the rebuke of his people, Israel, shall he take away from off the earth. That's the second advent. That's where he gives them the, the new spirit, the new birth, and the new heart. And cleanses them and says, I'll, those sins I remember no more. For the Lord has spoken it. It's going to happen. So we find in the Bible, we find a verse of scripture that's not in the modern Bible. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed. But rightly divine the word of truth. Nicodemus, didn't he believe on Jesus? Didn't he get right with Jesus? Was he not part of Sanhedrin? Where was he at the, at the cross? He shows up after the cross. And he brought some, what? He brought some, some spices for a dead body. I'm just got to rightly divide. One day these people are going to be found ashamed. And a little screwball from Daytona Beach, Florida, God's going to get praise. And yet I've failed the Lord. I'm still a sinner. And it shall be said in that day. Pay attention to in that day. Lo, this is our God. Is Israel saying that today? No. Are the nations saying that? No. You've got Christian Americans proclaiming that Donald Trump is their God. And that Donald Trump is the savior of America. We have waited for him. Israel's not saying that right now. Well, they do the Passover. The Passover says it's one of the three holidays for the Jew, for the feast day, that they're supposed to go to Jerusalem. How many American Jews go over to Jerusalem at the three set feasts? And when they get to Jerusalem, is their temple there? No, the dumb of the rock is there. How many Jews with, with the street preaching throughout the world? And I know there's street preaching going on in America. I know there's street preaching going on in England. I know there's street preaching going on all over the world. And there are Jews all over the world. How many of the street preaching, public ministry, Going knocking on doors with the true gospel. How many have you come up to Jewish people and say, yeah, we've been waiting for that Jesus. That's going to be second advent. That's when Jesus comes. Hey, here he comes. And he will save us. What does the meaning of Jesus mean? Jehovah saves. What did Joshua mean? Jehovah saves. Hosea is another of uh, uh, Jehovah saves. There's coming a repeat of Joshua bringing the children of Israel into the promised land. And Stephen says, Jesus, though some Bibles got it wrong. Hebrews say Jesus. Why? Because it's going to happen that Jesus is going to bring him in the promised land. We have waited for him. 
He, he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. See that capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Who is coming to save the Jews? Jesus. That capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D is Jehovah. Jehovah is Jesus, and Jesus is Jehovah. Stick your, stick your face in the Jehovah Witness and say, <laughs> you don't know the scriptures. Take your new world translation and go to hell with it for rejecting the deity of Jesus Christ. For in this mountain, V Zion, shall the hand of the Lord rest. And that's that rest you see in the book of Hebrews. Moab shall be trodden down under him. Oh, that's one of the nations clobbered. Even as straw is trodden down for the dunghill, it's trampled. And he shall spread forth his hands in the midst of them, Israel, as he that swimmeth spreads forth his hands to swim. It's a swimming motion. And he shall bring their pride together with the spoils of their hand. Pride is not good. And the fortress of high fort of thy walls shall bring down the mighty nation to be brought down. Lay low. And bring to the ground, even to the dust. God, Jesus Christ, will bring low the pride. And the poor and the needy, he'll lift up. The nation of Israel will set them in their place where they rightfully need to be. The nation above all nations, where the nation of Israel is, in God we trust. We just read that. That's Israel says that. One nation under God, and we're not talking about America. America is stolen the God of Israel. Look at the maps of New England. And take a reference to all the city names and town names that you find in the Bible. That those men in the black hats it started the congregational church, set out the new hope, the new Israel. And talk about the ways of killing and, and persecuting people that did not believe in their church, according to the Old Testament. That's with the Salem witch trials. America had in her foundation one of the things, hey, you know, we're the Israel, we're the new Israel, and we're going to go and conquer and bring in our nation. That's exactly what the Catholic Church does. But God's going to set that all away. God's going to put all that down. He's going to rise up Israel, the true people of God. 